In this video, you will learn to control the brightness of an LED using the Arduino's analog write function. This will allow you to gradually fade the LED on and off instead of just blinking it fully on and off using the digital write function like you've done before. The circuit to do this is no different than the circuit you would build just to blink an LED. On the breadboard, we have a resistor in series with the LED. If you don't know how a breadboard works, check out the previous videos in this playlist. We have one end of that circuit connected to one of the Arduino's pins with a jumper wire. We have the other end of the circuit connected to the ground pin with a jumper wire. The only thing that you need to watch out for is that to fade the LED, you have to use one of the pins that is capable of pulse width modulation. We will explain later in this video what exactly that means, but those are the pins with the little squiggly line or tilde symbol next to them. Only certain pins can do pulse width modulation, so for example, you see here I have the jumper wire plugged into pin 9, which has the PWM symbol next to it. I could not use pin 8, which does not have that symbol because pin 8 does not work with the analog write function. We will very briefly switch over to Tinkercad, which is an online circuit simulator that you can use if you do not have a physical Arduino. We have a separate video in this playlist that is an introduction to Tinkercad, so you can check that out. But it allows you to get a better view of the breadboard and exactly where everything is placed. So again, we have a 220 ohm resistor on the breadboard with its legs in different rows. Then we have an LED with its longer or positive leg, which is called the anode, in the same row as one end of the resistor. And then the shorter leg, or cathode, which is the negative end of the LED, is connected to the Arduino's ground pin with a jumper wire. And then the other end of the resistor is connected to Arduino pin 9, although we could have chosen any of the pins with that squiggly line next to them because they are all capable of pulse width modulation with the analog write function. So we could have used pin 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, or 11. So if you haven't already, pause the video here and build this circuit on your breadboard. Let's switch over to the Arduino IDE, and we're actually going to use one of the built-in example programs to demonstrate this. So open the IDE, then select File, Examples, Analog, Fading. And this will open the example fading program. Let's take a walk through this code and explain how it works. First, we declare a variable for the pin we are going to be using. We actually don't need to do anything in the setup function because the analog write command will still work even if you don't use the pin mode command to set the pin as an output. That might seem a little strange. It actually won't hurt anything if you do use the pin mode command to set the pin as an output here. So if you want to do that because it helps you remember that you're using the pin as an output, you can, but strictly speaking, you do not need to use it in setup if you're only gonna use the pin with analog write. Next, inside our regular loop function, we have something new called a for loop. So unlike your main loop, which is going to run forever, the for loop only runs a certain number of times based on some parameters that you give it. So what all of this stuff in parentheses here is saying is that for the value of the fade value variable, which is going to start at zero, we're going to increment it by five each time up until it reaches 255. So the for loop is going to execute once with a value of zero for the fade value variable, then it's gonna add five and do the loop again, then it's going to add five, so fade value will be 10, and so on, and it'll keep doing that all the way up until fade value reaches 255, but then it is going to exit that loop and keep going in the program, so it doesn't keep running forever like your main loop. Inside that for loop, we have two commands. First, we have the analog write command. You need to tell it what pin you are going to use, and then give it a value between 0 and 255. The bigger that number, the brighter the LED will be. So, remember how the for loop works, we are going to start off with a value of 0 for the fade value variable, so the LED will be completely off, and then each time we increase it by an increment of 5, so the LED will get a little brighter on each iteration through the loop, until we get up to full brightness at 255. 
So if you're not familiar with binary numbers, don't worry too much about why this goes up to 255 instead of something more intuitive like 100. This is the biggest number that can be stored with something called an 8-bit binary number, which is how computers count using ones and zeros. So you can't give the analog write command a number bigger than 255. It can't count any higher than that. So for example, if you try to give it 256, that won't make the LED any brighter. It will actually reset all the way back to zero and turn the LED off. So again, don't worry if you don't really understand how binary numbers work. Just remember that you have to give analog write a number between zero and 255. Anything outside of that range will cause strange behavior. After that analog write command, we have a delay command. So we're going to wait for a little bit at each brightness level before we go through the loop again. Now, after this first for loop is done, we then have a second for loop that is very similar, but instead of counting up from zero to 255, it is going to count down from 255 to zero. So it starts out at a value of 255. It's going to go until the fade value equals zero. And we're going to do that by subtracting five each time instead of adding five. Now, if you're confused by these plus equals and minus equals, operations. That is a shorthand notation in the programming language, but that is the same thing as writing, for example, fade value equals fade value plus five. So on each iteration through the loop, it's going to add five to the previous value of fade value. This is the same thing. It just takes longer to write, but if you find this notation confusing, it is perfectly fine to replace that, for example, with fade value equals fade value minus five and fade value equals fade value plus five. These are equivalent, it just takes a little longer to write, so some people prefer the shorthand notation. So if you haven't already, pause the video here, open this example program, upload it to your Arduino and make sure it works, and then try changing some of the variables. For example, you can change the increment in either one of the for loops. You can make this increment more slowly by changing it to a smaller number or more quickly by changing it to a bigger number. You could also change the delay value to change how long you hold at each brightness. So try fiddling with the numbers and then uploading the program again and see how you can change the fading behavior of the LED. So for example, here I have changed the program so the brightness is only increasing by one while the LED is fading on, but it is still decreasing by five when the LED is fading off. So you can see how it turns on much more slowly than it turns off. The other thing you might notice here is that it's a little harder to see the changes in brightness when the LED is close to fully on, and it's much easier to perceive those changes when the LED is close to off. So for example, you might see a much bigger change in brightness when you jump from values of 25 to 50 than you would between from a value of 200 to 225. That's okay, you'll just kind of have to get used to it and fiddle with the numbers so you can control the perceived brightness of the LED. So we've shown you how to use the analog write command. In this part of the video, we're going to explain a little more what it's actually doing and how it works. So what you have used before is the Arduino's digital write command. This allows you to toggle the voltage on one of the output pins between zero volts and five volts or between low and high. But a digital voltage can only be completely low or completely high. It can't be anything in between. So for example, you cannot set the output of a digital pin to two and a half volts. To do that, you would need an analog voltage. Analog means continuously variable. So this voltage can take on any value between zero and five volts. The problem is that the Arduino does not have a true analog output. It cannot generate a voltage that is exactly two and a half volts or any other value between zero and five. It can only generate a true digital output that is either zero or five volts. Pulse width modulation or PWM is a method we use to kind of get around that limitation by very rapidly switching a digital pin on and off. For example, you can picture how if we very quickly switch the pin between zero volts and five volts, so it's off half the time and on half the time, that would give us an effective average voltage of two and a half volts. So even though we don't have a true analog output, if we switch the digital pin on and off fast enough, we can create an average voltage somewhere in between those two values. So that is what the analog write command is actually doing. It is switching the pin on and off very quickly instead of generating a true analog voltage. 
It's called pulse width modulation because we can change or modulate the width of this pulse. For example, here, the pulse is on 50% of the time and off 50% of the time, but we could change that so it's on for 75% of the time and off for 25% of the time. Or the other way around, we could change it so it's only on for 25% of the time and off for 75% of the time. We can use this to control the brightness of an LED by switching it on and off much faster than the human eye can see. So, for example, I have two LEDs here. This one I have set to an analog write value of 255, so it is on all the time and it's at full brightness. This one I only have set to an analog write value of 25, but it is not actually receiving a constant lower voltage, it is turning on and off much faster than the human eye can see. So we perceive that as a constant brightness, but this LED is really off most of the time and only on very briefly, so it looks dimmer than this LED. The analog write function is useful if you want to control something with a continuous range instead of just turning it fully on or fully off. Later in this video series, we'll see how you can also use it to control the speed of a motor. For more Arduino tutorials and lots of cool projects you can do with an Arduino, check out the links in the video description. For thousands of other fun, hands-on science and engineering projects, visit us online at www.sciencebuddies.org.